This episode is brought to you by our High Performance Father Coaching Program, where we help men juggle business, marriage, and fatherhood to create the greatest balance and impact life has to offer. This is done with our philosophy that is at the core of achieving these phenomenal results in family, self, and service. And that is investing in yourself first so you can be a true 100% for yourself, but just as importantly, for those around you that you love and care about. If you're a father struggling with choosing between your work and your family, lacking balance and connection in your relationship, what your children need, your own needs, whilst building prosperity in your business, head over to highperformancefather.com, fill out the form, and I'll have my coaches contact you to see how we can help you. And if you're a good fit, what it looks like to join the winner's circle on the inside. But for now, take the time to yourself, for yourself, and enjoy this episode. Hope you guys are ready for this. We've got four hours with Mike <laughs> Killing at Killington. <laughs> Imagine if we went that long. Uh, <laughs> I've got the evening crust off, so. <laughs> <laughs> Be phenomenal, be phenomenal. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to a, well, I just said the word. This is a phenomenal episode that we have here installed for you. Why? Because we have one of the leaders of the tribe. They're all leaders on the inside, but shit, man, make no mistake. When you're looking to model or you're looking to men who lead by example with their health, with their attitude, with their work ethic, um, with their work in general, their business striving towards being a, someone who provides better service, family, self and service. That's what makes our life. Um, husband, father, Mike's transformation has just been second to none. It's 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 been incredible. It, it really has. And I feel like even though I'm part of your life, Mike, and, and together we pioneer the evolution and the change for, for men across the country. It's not just me, not just me and the coaches. It's it's us, the coaches and, and the men who stand up and, and and are part of the code. Honestly, mate, it's, it's, it's been like kicking back in the grandstands, just watching the show and enjoying the show of, of, of Mike Killington's life turning around. But thank you for giving us the time, man. This is probably a little while coming, but I really love having you on here and appreciate you um, taking the time to join us, Mike. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Al. Fantastic. It was pretty it was pretty cool. Just a quick recap. I'm sure I'll have it with every member who who does come on here who went to Cozzy, but that was quite an event, wasn't it? Oh, it was powerful. Um very powerful. I was already, you know, on my way to becoming a better version, but Cozzy um gave me a, a new level of maturity. I sort of have said to the coaches and the tribe members since I've been back, I just had this level of calmness and confidence to me which I hadn't had before and I think that's sort of more recognising and knowing for the first time really what I needed to do to perform well in all the areas Um, and although I was getting that already um, I feel like Cozzy expedited that process a lot for me to just sort of start nailing it and feeling confident with it It it's incredible the greatest event I've ever been a part of it was Mm. very special yeah really was mate i'm working through some of the footage and pictures and it's just like wow you can't and you just it's, it doesn't even do justice talking about it to be fair mate because you, you even the pictures even the videos like watching the videos you, you cannot and it's amazing because we have this connection with fathers all over the country once in every day you know that you know um, a father getting up in western australia obviously a few hours behind is dialed into the same environment the, the, the same pathway or processes obviously the the skill sets are just for the man the strategies are more specific for the man but it's like hey we're part of this environment where guys all over the country are, are dialing in the same hunger and tenacity to grow and and that's what I love about the physical events. It is the cream on, on top, but, I mean, shit, mate, it really is the, the cream on top when we come together oh, because it's built off such a, an incredible foundation of of being connected. And um, I, I really enjoyed it, mate, like to to the point where it's almost, and I spoke about this, I think, in the closing session. It was, it was almost sad and uh, that you know that this time has come and, and will come to pass, like all great things. But to the point where I said, I don't know if you remember, but the last talk I was openly saying, yeah, this morning I was tired, my scores were down because I tracked my sleep and because it had been a big few days and I was calculating my head, okay, how long should I speak for? Can we wrap this up so I can jump on the road and I'll be home at this time for Corinne and the kids? And I was explaining this to you guys and then I just went, 
they can wait. Yeah. I was like, this is our time. This is us and now. And uh, hopefully my wife's not listening to this. And <laughs> <laughs> you should have been home half an hour earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the next podcast episode. We could. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yes, yes. We'll make sure there's no weapons in the room. But, um, but, but just quickly, before we dive into your life, Mike, you said two words that are very important, I feel, as we continually age, uh, not to be the old wise man, but something we can apply immediately, confidence and calmness. What's your viewpoint or opinion? If that's missing from a man's life, what does that become? Is it chaos? Is it other things? Like if you're not confident, if you don't have a level of calmness and control, are you reacting? You don't have your shit together in your own identity, who you need to be? Like what? What's, I'm just curious because you spoke about that being something that really launched and took you to that, that next level, being there at the event. But what, what, is, what is involved in a man's life without those two things and then what's the byproduct when they are in place? Um. Well, react, reactive, like you said, Al, like I, I formerly was very reactive. It's been a big challenge of mine. Um, I haven't had a level of calmness in the areas of, of self and, and family. I have in service, but it's funny, the more I've progressed through this program, I realise that um, you can have calmness in one area, but it doesn't necessarily substitute to the other areas unless you put effort into it which is something that I sort of have become very familiar with now. So um, being reactive with my my wife and, and my children was a big challenge of mine um, and with myself. But, I, you know, being reactive to myself and being frustrated and angry with myself naturally projected onto my family as well, I think, and, and my, my friends. Um, so definitely reactive and, and and unfulfilled I think without that calmness the, the calmness has just given me such a level of satisfaction and fulfillment in my life where I genuinely have started to enjoy life without the chaos and the nonsense you know and, um, and business for me was um, I was calm but you know often it was chaotic around undertaking a lot and a lot and a lot but I I could deal with that well um, but I I had a, a poor level of satisfaction in my overall life. Um, so, you know, for me, being part of HPF now for eight or nine months, I finally found a, a level of freedom and happiness that I have got from being calm and confident. And that that confidence um, has been through reconnecting with my family, you know, and, and reconnecting with myself and enjoying the things that, I, that I'm doing now leisure-wise and... Um, and, and having the ability to say it's okay to look after yourself, it's okay to do things for yourself, which formerly I've just work, 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 and then family and being poor, poorly present within my family structure. So, um, you know, they've been huge for me. And I think a lot of fathers would be similar to me where you're so invested in, in business and, and um, you don't have a calmness and you, you don't have confidence in anything apart from business. So one area excels, the other areas fall down and eventually even the area you're excelling in falls down, which was the case for me. My business started to, to struggle as my, um, my happiness became worse and worse and to the point where, you know, I was very depressed prior to joining HPF. So um, it will eventually get you, I think, regardless of how well you do in service. If you don't put the time and effort um, into the other areas, your business will eventually fail as well. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. No, uh, well, well spoken and well said, Mike. You know, I look at even confidence, and and they go hand in hand. You know, if you're more confident, you generally and um, genuinely can be more calmer. But mm. I look at the episode when I was talking with my wife Corinne around um, all the facades I put up and the lies around us being okay, not having money, me using credit cards, and it, it was actually her me feeling that she deserved more and I couldn't give it to her, which takes me to this point of confidence. A lot of the men out there who aren't confident, when you get exposed because you're lacking the skill sets and the ability, aka the, the confidence as well, because you don't know what to do around communicating with your wife, diffusing the bombs she might throw, handling their household, what changes between not just being a man, but marriage into fatherhood, into parenthood, massive. Like that is that is where the game changes and people just don't get it. You're going to get divorced. Okay, did you have these problems before you had kids? No. So what's the problem? The kids are just highlighting a lack of investing in alignment and in yourselves and in each other, in your marriage. Like it's 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 actually really, really simple. But 
a lot of the times we blow our stack because the ego, the pride in the front comes up because we don't have the answer. Why? Because you didn't fucking find the answer. And so many men think that there is no answer to fuck. There is when it comes to connecting with your children, with your wife. And, and this is a big thing because when you have all that lined up, ah, the confidence is a byproduct. You don't have to get up in the mirror and slap yourself in the face. I'm, I'm going to be confident. At that. It's like, you've got your shit together. You can handle yourself and, very sure, but I hope you guys listening to this or watching this on uh, on YouTube are ready for a bumper episode. We've got a man here who was on the verge of becoming an Olympian. He was very close to, um, you know, we'll go through some sensitive points. Obviously, running a a very successful business, um, you know, on the brink of you know, ending it all, and and really in 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 the uh, final hour, in, in the depths and. Of, of despair, Mike reached out to us and he's just turned his life around in, in an unbelievable way to go from someone who was a high performer to becoming a, a high performance father. And that's a, that's a, it's, it's a no easy feat, but B it's no easy feat because the standards we set a, a, a high, but they're possible. They are possible, Mike, and you're living proof of that. But why the fuck wouldn't you want it though, right? Family, self, and service, you, you can have it all. But we've got some some amazing shares coming your way, gentlemen. So make sure you strap yourself in or if you're going for a walk, take the time out, take the space out for yourself to, to really sink your teeth into another man, another successful high-performance father who's, who's really winning in life. But I guess before we dive into uh, marriage, business, and everything else in between, uh, who, who was Mike Killington? Like, I'd love for you to share a little bit of a background on yourself, Matt, I guess, leading into that and you know, your upbringing or sports and, and um, yeah, a bit more about your, your journey as a whole. Yeah, well, um, I was obviously born in Adelaide, South Australia, and I have a twin brother um, who is in a similar line of work to me. Um, very different characters, but we've sort of uh, always stuck together at times and had a, a oh, at times quite a robust uh, friendship and relationship as well. Um, I was put into sport really early. Sport's been a big thing uh, for my family. My grandfather was a, a, a solid AFL football player, played sort of league over in South Australia. My father was a very talented sportsman, but he grew up incredibly poor uh, in London. He's from, from England. Um, his, both his parents died when he was very young and um, I think it's a part of that. Dad um, got heavily involved in alcohol and stuff as well as a, as a stress reliever and we'll probably talk about my challenges with alcohol uh, in during this podcast as well, obviously. But um, him and mum had some troubles. They separated actually when we were quite young for a while and dad cleaned his act up, got sober, um, became the, the leader that we all knew he could as well and uh, the family got back together, which was brilliant. So... Um, I've sort of tried to follow in that footstep a little bit. Should have probably sorted myself out before I went down that path, but that—that that is what it is. I can only change the future. But, yeah, sport was a big thing for us, heavily invested in sport, and I think that's always given me the tenacity to um, really strive and achieve. So, you know, we were early risers as swimmers. We, we were up at 4 o'clock every morning. So, as you probably see from my rise to win war cries, I'm up sort of four o'clock every morning still now um, and, you know, jump out of bed. So, you know, uh, went to a, a just a, a, a local school uh, known for its sports down here in Adelaide and, and always achieved really well. Um, great loving family and supportive family. So um, I've been blessed with that definitely and they've been incredibly supportive on my uh, transformation and transition and uh, very supportive of the HPF program for sure. So, yeah. So um, it's, it's very interesting, Mike, talking about having a, a, a twin brother and, and the family dynamic. Um, I found with three brothers that I was very competitive when it came to sports. My body, obviously, I let my body down between eight and 16, um, which I've spoken about in other episodes, but turn, turn all that around. But sport was always the vessel, man. And, you know, it's, it's resilience and, and mental grit and toughness and, and understanding that losing is a part of life but not just not necessarily sitting on your hands and just accepting that how do i get up and how do i win and the war cry that mike mentioned it, it's awesome to see you, you jump on the chat thread in our ecosystem and there's all these hashtag rise to wins and there's there's warriors and mike's right up there with the early ones from from 4 a.m onwards and it, it's very inspiring which is which is when i look at something like 
brothers, twin brother, or a or a brotherhood, or I know there's a lot of words out there, and there's that many fucking rising. You know, here, here we are. Let's be kings and king program this and king. But it's not about just buzzwords, but yeah, really having men around you who have that that ability to genuinely challenge you and push you, if not directly to you through their own achievements. It's a powerful thing to have, but I'm curious, man, like with what, what happened at home with the old man, like, do you think there is a correlation between a lot of men who might be struggling to be the best fathers they can um, being a case of off the back of what they went through when they were younger, what they had in a father, maybe what they didn't have in a father. Or do you think there's a connection there because that's your environment? That's what you were exposed to? Or what are your thoughts on that, mate, when it comes to, I guess, uh, generational um, generational health from a physical, mental and emotional point of view with the, with the family? Look, I definitely think that there's an impact there for sure. I mean, uh, my, my mother and father speak heavily about the impacts of my father's drinking when I was young. I was quite a challenging young young man and quite quite a risk taker. Even though I was a high achiever in my sports, I was quite a, a big risk taker and um, got into trouble a lot when I was sort of younger. Um, definitely, uh, you know, the, the, so I had the positive influences and the negative influences, I think. So the, the drive and hunger to be an elite sportsman, my father was a very elite sportsman himself um, and very competitive, but, you know, he always pushed us um, in, a, in a caring way to achieve our greatest sort of um, that we could within sport. But definitely the, the drinking um, thing and being exposed to that and some of the challenges around the relationships, it's funny because I saw it and I knew um, the difficulties it created in my family, yet I still went down that path. And whether that's through my experiences and learned behaviour, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, I certainly think there's something to be said about that generational impact for sure. Um, but even though my father sort of sobered up, you know, quite early. I suppose actually he probably did it around the same age as what my children are now, like my eldest is six. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely um, impactful for sure. Um, and my twin brother was quite a heavy drinker as well. He still, still sort of likes a social drink, I think, and stuff. But, um, um, but yeah, he, there were certainly times in his life where he geared heavily towards the the drinking as well so yeah you drink anymore mike not at all not having had a drop of alcohol since the day i joined hpf yeah <laughs> not one haven't i stopped drugs completely and alcohol completely uh haven't watched tv in eight eight and a half months i haven't watched tv once since joining hpf unless i'm watching a, a movie with the kids um i've, I've let go of all the shit all the bad stuff i've, I've sort of dived in 100 percent and I've um, I've listened to everything the programs taught me, and I thought, fuck it, if I'm going to get, if I'm going to become the greatest version of myself, I'm going to listen to everything and and commit to everything. Um, and you know, the reward's been um, exceptional. So why would I stop <laughs> or start doing any of that shit again? Yeah. So. So the rewards are exceptional and obviously we're going to talk about some of the phenomenal changes Mike's had and expand on that. But essentially, it's. it's it's uh, it's always something that comes down to the choice, isn't it, Mike? Like you chose to go all in. That doesn't mean that other members don't. It's just a case of, hey, if everything's there, like, well, you told me, mate, like we have everything in place and it's not just overwhelming. Here's information. And just look up a search engine and we got all these different links. Like the program is a proper intensive program that, fuck, man, you grab this with both hands, you stand up, cut the bullshit that you feed yourself, live an honest life, like stand up and own the facts and the truth of exactly where you are. And then the future facts that will lead to future feelings where both will be better because you're leading. When you have that in a platform, <clears throat> that's why I've been dying to get you on because you're one of many, but you're a very um, recent, uh, even though it has been, wow, it's gone quick, hasn't it? Eight, nine months. But you, you are a continued, when I say recent, you are a continued point of remembrance for us to go hey yeah like you know we might cop a bit of flack on ads and bits and pieces guys don't know nothing about it but have a fucking look at mike 
and all the other guys we got on. We had JK on um, obviously last week, and and we've got future um, members lined up or members lined up for future episodes because it's important to share the messages and just from Al's mouth at all on the collective, as you know, Mike, of, of everything that we that we are. It's not not about me, but um individually. But that's massive, man. Cutting the drinking, cutting the drugs, no TV, like. What would you say you've gotten back in in time and time and energy? You know, and we'll talk about connection, but time and energy. What would you say you've gotten back since um you know since joining and, and adopting these new principles and habits? Oh, you know, it'll sound excessive, and you'll think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. I genuinely believe I've got thirty to forty hours back a week for sure. Um, I know that you know. On a lot of the podcasts, you know, we say we average 20 hours a week for men sort of thing, but it's been far more significant for me. Um, my work, I've cut down a lot on my hours of work, um, but funnily enough, my income has nowhere near dropped to the level of what my hours have reduced because I've got energy and efficiency and happiness. So um, we did a business boardroom quite early in the piece when I joined Um I think so. I joined in September. I reckon the business boardroom was around October, November. Um, and straight away, I got some really good things from that. And I've been in business and been successful in business, but um, was looking at it from a um, sink or swim point of view previously. And whereas um, I got to sort of, as we say in the program, zoom out and have a look. So I implemented programs and systems um, straight away, which have allowed me to do um, similar level of work. I'm not doing as much as I used to, but that wasn't sustainable. Look where that got me. So um, th- that, that just wasn't going to work out, but certainly um, very successful in business still. Um, got a huge amount of time back. My energy is like I, I can't remember feeling this good out ever. <laughs> like, you know, and I think when you feel so shit, you forget how shit you feel for so many years, you know, and you just wake up and, um, and just battle and battle. And that's the difference. Every every day was a battle for me, like waking up, dragging my ass out of bed, feeling like shit. I was still getting up early, um, you know, most days. But, you know, weekends I, I wasn't. I was lazy. I was at home in bed and my wife on me and my kids sort of missing out on me, you know. Now I'm up before everybody every day, Um you know, my wife sometimes complains about my kids rising early. And I'm like, well, I'm up. I'm ready to rock and roll, you know. Um, and now we've got different roles, obviously, my, my wife and I. Um, but, yeah, the, the the time and energy is just incredible. Like, um, and I'm making good use of all the time I've got back. I'm not wasting it. I'm not fucking around. I'm, I'm sort of investing it in, in myself, investing it in my children, my, my family, um, you know, doing things I love again, like surfing. I've taken up surfing and just incredible. I love it. You know, it gives me um, a new lease on life. It, it impacts my physical, emotional and mental health because it's a hard workout as well, you know, and my training, you know, I'm committed to my training. I feel great for it. So, I mean, yeah, the, the time and energy is incredible because it allows you to achieve everything else. And like we say, it's not a health and fitness program, but shit, without good health and fitness, it's really hard to be a, a high achiever in those other areas of your life because you don't have the energy and the time to perform. Mm. It's a, It really is the biggest limiting factor that we've found, Mike. And look, it goes hand in hand with probably the universal flaw that most people, especially men, especially fathers as they get older, face a lack of self-belief, a lack of self-worth, respect, uh, value. And you can't have that. This is why I mean when I say it goes hand in hand. You can't have that if you got fuck all energy. You need to have a massive gas tank capacity. Capacity is the problem. If you can build your capacity, you then have more room to move, more opportunity more of an ability to remain calm, to slow things down, to get time back on your side, to produce when you need to, the confidence that you can produce and so on and so forth, the endurance to carry through and last the day. Even looking at this, I was doing some quick numbers, like shit, even with travel and work, <clears throat> bathing, eating, sleep, lack thereof. Yeah, mate, I can definitely believe that, Mike, because you, you guys out there who have excuses, you don't audit yourself. You don't clear on the facts. You're just popping up opinions and feelings to justify your position. Every single man out there has at least 50 hours a week, at least. I'm not saying just free time because when it's free time, it's not me time. It just gets taken up by everyone else or anything else. So 
I can definitely see that as, as, as being an absolute for you, Mike. I know for myself being really dialed in, just checking myself every few months keeps me sharp. But even for me, I probably jagged, I'd say, 24 hours back, um, you know, as, as an average. Our average is 1,000 hours over the year, 20 hours. But it's really funny looking at this, like how many how – many, how many men will be listening to this episode now going, shit, man, I'd love to just have three to four hours back a week and, and somehow you don't. But that, that's the uh, that's a problem though, isn't it, Mike? When you don't get clear on, I, I guess, the facts of where your life stands, you, you prop up these stories or these justifications and you think that you can't do something or it's not possible or you don't have the time yet. Here you are, a man who's got 30 to 40 hours a week back and not at the cost of business but at the absolute enhancement of his life. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to believe. And even when I joined the program and I heard, you know, you'll get, you know, this this amount of hours back, you sort of, um, you know, it's hard it's hard to grasp the concept. But then you start implementing things and and putting, you know, you know your routines in place and your processes, and you think, shit, there's some more, there's some more, there's some more. And the more you implement, the more you know you you engage in it the more it keeps coming. So it's sort of for me it might have been 10 or 20 hours at the start and, and the more I've invested and the more I've honed my routines, reflected, stopped telling myself the bullshit stories I've been telling myself for 10 years which were really excuses and, and being a victim um, really and letting go of all that shit and letting go of waste. Um, I'm the same as you, Al. I hate waste, you know, and... Um, I didn't realise how much I was wasting though, you know. So it's easy, you know, oh, I do 90-hour a week, so I, um, you know, I don't have any time to do anything. But within my service is where a lot of waste was coming because I was, you know, um, not being efficient, not being effective. Uh, I was there doing things, but I was doing it slowly, you know, late in the evening. Um, I was getting a shit full sleep, so I wasn't efficient really early. Um, now I can get up and, and I can achieve literally when I'm zoned in, I can do in three hours what I used to do in 10 through work. If I'm writing like medical legal, you know, complex medical reports, which take a lot of focus, um, if I'm on, on, I can just smash it. Whereas I just, it, they used to take me days. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's why we always talk about time and energy are two of the most valuable resources, not because they're finite, because that's what you will use to construct and have the building blocks that is life. So what Mike's talking about there is not just, oh, there's only 168 hours in the night. It's, not, it's what you're doing that time as well. I mean, who, who the fuck would want to become the glutton at a buffet, just wanting bits and pieces of, of what all of what life has? Like, why? You're going to get left bloated as fuck and actually not being fulfilled or, or rewarded or nourished or nurtured towards the next opportunity. You can't do anything. You're just stuck. Like, Mike, none of us have enough time in this life, even if you live to be 100. No one has enough time to do every little thing that they want when it comes to shiny objects, attractions, temptations, um, distractions. So why would you even pursue that? It's it's a game you'll never win. How about we triple down and, and firstly find out what the most important things are, not what everything is that I might try and get but never will. What are the most important things? Make sure they are the most important things. So that's what we say sometimes. You know, we talk about mitts. Well, sometimes your mitts to find out what your mitt is, you know. Finding out what the most important thing is is the most important thing for so many people who just drift through time and space lost. But it really is a case of building this capacity. And it blows me away sometimes, man, when I look at like a common example, someone would take medication and drugs to reduce uh, inflammation or, or, you know, blood pressure and the other, other bits and pieces that's affected them chronically yet they're stuffing their mouth with shit fucking food. And it's like, well, your body is fighting. This is the thing that came through to me, what you shared just then. When you don't implement and, and liberate yourself of, of, of self-imposed shackles, victim mentality or not, literally your actions, your body is working overtime. It's working so hard to stay afloat with, with trying to equalize itself. We, we've got drugs or medication and we've got the shit lifestyle and I'm, I'm trying to balance out the two or the drugs or the sedation and distraction in, in your case and many others is uh, drugs that are used as an escape, you know, and um, alcohol is obviously a drug, but drugs and alcohol as an escape. But um, it's it's pretty crazy, man, when you, when you look at how this just becomes a part of people's life and all of a sudden 
it really is a part of their life. And it's, it's no disrespect to, to people I know. And there is one person I know, and I won't I won't name her, my mother-in-law. No. <laughs> but I remember going around there. She won't listen to this. It's okay. Lovely yeah. woman, lovely woman. But I look back and Crit and I laugh. I'm like, man, she used to have a cask of wine every fucking Wednesday night. I'm like, how is your week and your life that bad that by Wednesday you need to have a cask of wine? And I never, I was just like, ah, oh, you know, because it's the culture I was brought up in, not through a house of alcoholics, but I was like, yeah, alcohol is a normal thing. And I didn't know how much wine she was having. And I'd say, I'm like, oh, well, maybe it's just what adults do. I was only, I met Krim when I was 17, but between 17 and 21 at the time when I'd spent a fair bit of time when she was still living with her parents. Yeah, it's just what, what happens. And I look back now with Krim, I'm like, fuck me, death, man. A cask of wine every Wednesday. Wednesday. Like, it's, what is what is what is the escape? How is is life that hard, that bad? She's got two two daughters. Corinne's one of them, and they seem to be okay kids. Like crazy man, but this this is what happens. And um, I guess I'm curious on your perspective. Why do you think that happens, Mike? Where people just uh, just just bury themselves? Like we're talking here about time and energy and. Look, for you guys out there, absolutely. You, you can get time back. You can get energy back. And that just creates a world of change. But why do you think people just, I guess, move towards self-implosion? I think people often get stuck in the rat race out and don't actually um, zoom out and reflect on things. And that's a big thing I've learned through the program is asking myself and my family the questions, what do I want? You know, asking my daughter what, what do you want? How can I be better? These are just conversations I never had prior to the program. So, you know, I think you you get stuck in a rat race and, and you're not happy in it. I mean, I know I wasn't happy in my life and from the outside looking in, this, you know, successful man in business um, doing really well, you know, earning significant amount of money and, and what have you and um, looked like we had a, a happy marriage and a happy families from the outside um, and there were some good moments but, you know, was I present? No, not at all. I was never present with my family, you know. So, you know, when I, I was either at work or when I was at home, I was sedating and distracting. I mean, my children hardly saw me without alcohol um, in my body for the first five years of their life, literally, you know, and that's no bullshit, um, and I, and I would, would have previously be ashamed of that, and you know, but I'm not anymore because I, ca I can't change that, you know, and it, it is what it is, unfortunately. Do I wish I'd done better? Yes. But I'm doing better now. So, you know, I'm putting the right things in place. But, you know, and once you get to a level where I think you, you, you know you're not doing well, it's really easy to, to keep focusing on that sedation and distraction, you know, and, and I knew I was doing well at work. I knew I was doing poorly at home. I wasn't happy. I wasn't wasn't um, being fulfilled. I wasn't getting the things I needed from life, um, despite other people thinking I was. So the easiest way is, you know, escape, distract yourself, sedate. Um, it'll be all right. Oh, I've, I've got a few drinks into me. I've got a line of marching powder into me. I'm, you know, I'm feeling all right now. And, you know, before you know it, you're bloody stuck in, in the thing. And, you know, I was <laughs> I was drinking significant amounts. A cask of wine on a Wednesday night is, uh, is very little compared to what I was doing, you know. And, and I, I am off everything completely. I was quite sick when I first joined the program from alcohol withdrawal for a couple of weeks. Apart from getting a, few, a little bit of medication from the doctor just to help me through that period without getting sick, I haven't done anything else. I haven't attended any rehab programs. I haven't done any AA. I haven't done any of that stuff. I've invested in the program and I have no desire or wants or anything to, to get back on that stuff again. So just through replacing, you know, my bad habits with good habits and immersing in the program, the, the tribe and the, the coaches, um, I've... I've you know, changed my world considerably. So. Isn't it crazy how much opportunity people actually have, mate, but they, they neglect to open their eyes or see it? You know, like you said, you have so many opportunities, even with habits, okay? You've got bad habits, no worries. When you remove that, guess what? You've got an opportunity to put a good habit in place, mm -hmm. make it a great habit. And this is this is what I'm talking about, self-belief and, and limiting beliefs, and, and especially capacity too, having the energy to perform. Um, 
that people just cut themselves down or cut themselves short or they've just settled or, like you said, they, they look to escape and they get stuck in this rat race and this rat race, when they say yes to that, means they say no to the facts and the truth and awareness of where life is actually going. It'll be, I'll turn it around. I'll, I'll just get in front of this quarter or this year or this month or this week or this day. And you say that 365 times, yeah, I'll, I'll get through today and, and tomorrow we'll, we'll have a look. Well, that's a fucking year, you know. And you, you do that a few times, there's five years and it's um, it's great. And we can't get away with it the, the way, we, I mean, you know, when it comes to neglecting your, your, your body and mind like you might have when you were younger. I mean, you were, you know, um, obviously an, an aspiring athlete that then converted in and, you know, a phenomenal athlete which, which played high-level AFL. And, uh, and swimming, I, I guess I'd love to, <clears throat> I'd love to see the perspective of now you're a little bit older and wiser. Um, what drove you to become that? But even then, some of your accolades are then moving into, you know, marriage and, and when you became a father for the first time. Um, yeah, I, I like sport. I think for me, it was, again, something I did well at and I geared towards it. I wasn't actually academically, um, I, don't, I won't say I wasn't very good. I didn't invest in it. And it's funny, this program's allowing me to see all these things now that I, I never saw before. Was I smart? Yeah, I probably was smart. Did I put effort into being smart at school initially? No, I didn't. I didn't do my homework because I didn't enjoy it. I didn't do certain things. So sport was an area. And, again, I think, you know, I, I think I was – affected quite a bit from my father's drinking from an early age so sport was something I did I did well at and I was really good at it um I had a natural ability you know I was one of those guys that could try any sport and do well I wasn't always the best but I you know I could make a grade in any sport I tried pretty much you know within a school level um because I was tenacious and and um any time I wasn't good at something, I worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. And, again, you know, you bring it back to the whole life, like you say, our reps in the gym, you know, doing, you know, you know, I get frustrated with my daughter for not doing something that I've asked her to do, but how much, much repetition have I put in? Nowhere near as much as what I have in sort of other areas of my life. So, um, so sporting, you know, big thing for me. Um, did really well and then uh, like many swimmers um, after I did year 12 I focused really hard on my academia in year 11 and 12 and and lo and behold I did really well and got into a a good university course um, which required a high TER but in saying that most of the stuff I've learned at university I I shouldn't say this but um, it it hasn't served me well in, in Clinical practice, I think you do a lot of, um, you know, background information and not a lot of practical side of things. But, um, um, but yeah, did, did sort of uh, well through, you know, university and, and into business. And then I suppose I met my wife, sorry, when I was um, uh, in 2006. Uh, we met and we were, things were really hunky-dory. And um, I don't know, I knew instantly and we both did that. We had a, a pretty special connection, and um, and we would we would say we we were soulmates, you know. And I think you know a lot of people do have their soulmate out there. But uh, what I've learned, no matter how good you are together and how um, how much you are soulmates, if you don't invest in that relationship, then it it, it too will fail, regardless of how good you are on books. Um, so we we had a, a quite a, a, a good marriage initially and a good relationship. My drinking was always a bit of an issue, you know, excessively drinking. Once I stopped playing competitive sports, I, I definitely did drink too much and, and, you know, use cocaine, you know, quite quite a lot here and there. Um, and But the our marriage was still still good, you know, and we were, we were hot on and, but, uh, you know, that transition into fatherhood, like I said to you earlier, I was... A real challenge for me. I think I'm. I was used to doing well at things, and um, and you know, I suppose work. You know, if I if I couldn't succeed in an area, working at it and working at it until I got, you know, I, I was successful. And then I don't know what it was about because it, it was the happiest and proudest I ever was having a having a daughter. My first daughter, Isabella, um, who's now six, but. 
I can paint a picture back to when I first had a child where I started getting more and more lost in life and, and losing that confidence, losing that calmness most definitely. Um, and, you know, I think up until recently really um, is where I've started, uh, now I'm starting to really enjoy it. But I don't know, we had three children quite quickly. They're all less than two years each apart, you know, around the 20, 19, 20 months apart. So we had three, three and under when the last one was born. The eldest one was only three. Um, the number three was a surprise. It wasn't planned. And, and my wife and I weren't in a great place at the time either. So that really created some significant challenges. I mean, I remember my wife coming in and crying when she um, tested positive on a pregnancy test. Um, and me just saying, it'll be all right, I'll change, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be better, I'll support you, I'll help you. But I didn't, you know, because um, I was just too busy stuck in this. Um, by that stage, I'd sabotage myself. You know? I, I wasn't doing well at home, so I just kept throwing into service, throwing into service, I'm good at this, I'm good at this, I'll keep doing it. So it's, it's funny because it's the thing that, Still to this day, being a father, um, even early on when I was a father, was the proudest thing and it, it made me the happiest. But I, I think because I didn't know how to do it or there wasn't a rule book or there wasn't certain skill set that I could work on that I knew about at the time, I, I was lost. I didn't know. You know, like with bench press, you want to bench press 100 kilos. It was a pretty easy routine to get there, you know. Start with 60, increase to 70, 80, 90, you know what I mean? But with, with being a dad, the, um, I suppose the lack of control and the, the, the significant variables complicated things for me a lot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, it, it was a tricky transition. I think it's where I spiral out of control a little bit. My alcohol certainly increased significantly. Um, and my my time into business, I just threw everything into it. Um, and I was still helpful at home, but, yeah. But, yeah, I, I sort of, um, I certainly wasn't present, you know, and wasn't at home much either, so, yeah. Mm. So it's tough, man, when you look at fatherhood too, and I, I know there's obviously, this isn't all women, but more often than not, 99.9% .9 of women, they're, they're thrust into, into motherhood or parenthood because they, they have to, right? They're, they're um, carrying the child and then they're bearing the child and there's either breastfeeding or not, they're keeping it alive. Whereas I look at a lot of things around fatherhood, um, A, obviously we don't get the support that women get around that. Um, B, it's a complete change up to, uh, like you said, with the variables, to what we normally see as control or in, through our own actions or what's familiar to get a return on investment. So fatherhood is much more voluntary than, than motherhood because it's like, okay, well, and, and when I say return on investment, of, of course, your own child, your own blood, staying alive, thriving, that, that's a given. But also you're not behind the wheel of a lot of those things. You still go out and produce or hunt. or So a lot of it is, is voluntary where you're going, okay, I'm, I'm here to turn up or be present or provide or contribute support the wife support the child where the roi might be years later or it might be something that's completely new that you need to psychologically construct into making it yes there is a return on investment here it's not the same as going out and making money or building businesses or having you know um, lunches or dinners or wearing suits but it's it's absolutely something that that is going to be rewarding and it, it's a really um it's a bit of a head fuck isn't it mike because you look at it you're like it's the most happiest thing ever because as a man the, the, the cave man with his cave and his family and his tribe, that fulfilment and happiness is so deeply ingrained in our DNA. Yet in the modern world, yeah, we don't have control. It's, it's not familiar because we've never done it before. And then there are all these different variables that makes us not necessarily weaker, but definitely more susceptible, more fatigued, more tired. You don't get sleep. You know, you've got more moving parts, more stress. You can't just fix something like you normally would out there in business or anywhere else or with your body. You can't become Mr. Fix. It's not just a linear a, a graph that you just follow, like getting up to progressive overload to bench press 100 kilos. Like you said, it's, it's so many unknowns that's coming from potentially a a more vulnerable or susceptible version of yourself because your energy isn't there. The time changes, which means the habits, the routines change. And um, 
And a lot of the times, through society as well, um, we focus on what we control, but you can't neglect the reality. Yeah, we do get pushed to the side. We, we do, um, especially from a networking support. There's one thing that one of uh, one of my friends said, who's um, I think Dave uh, Dave might have said it. Um, one of my friends who's done some special coaching pieces. He's been on an episode. When the mother gives birth, her network generally increases because there's, you know, there's um, obviously uh, yeah, different clubs for the, the children or mums or mums and bubs. They're all got different names, but those sorts of groups and clubs and networking doctors' appointments. Well, whereas the men's sort of can constrict or contract and becomes less, and he triples down on on his work and then just just hanging around. And 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 I get that, man. I never quite understood it until I became a father. But I get that when I've had those conversations with. Um, ex-servicemen in military because they've been away so long they come home it's like I don't know where I fit I don't know where I fucking stand in this place and I've had a lot of chats with them over the years where they've felt um, through self or not or probably both alienated um, very tough the game changes Mike that's what we talk about I mean you know you, and we'll dive into obviously some of the the hardships but what did you find after having three kids man like I thought I had a rough three under four but Three under three, um, or, or I think I'd three under five, maybe three under four and a half. Yeah, it's tough. It is very tough. But what I mean, this I guess just started to expose probably the holes in your game. Like the game changes, but the sedation, the distraction, obviously the drugs and alcohol. Like, is is that what caused? Like, did this um, accelerate some of the the cracks or or the issues that you you weren't facing that you probably should have? Or what happened, man? Like, what happened in the following years after? Well, I guess. You know, after number two was after number three was born, what happened from there? I just I um I distanced myself more and more unintentionally, but looking back on it, I think I, I said to you guys early on in the piece that I felt like a spectator watching from the sidelines in my own family. And I I genuinely did. I I felt like there was a family with dad and then a family without me. And the family without me was um uh, a more fluid family that worked better and was happier um, and didn't have the growling and didn't have the, you know, the grumpy dad and, and the, the yelling and the screaming and, and all of that. So I, um, I think once I, I saw that in my head, um, I distanced myself even more. You'd think that naturally you'd want to try and fix it, but I just didn't have the tools and the skills and, and the know-how to do it at the time and I was so heavily invested in taking on more work than I could handle um, and, again, I went back to I was doing well in that area so I just focused hard on it. So um, what ensued was, uh, you know, a significant um, deterioration in my physical and mental health. I put on a lot of weight. Um, I got on blood pressure medication um, it's very, very high blood pressure. When I did my 24-hour monitor, they said, Jesus Christ, like some of the readings I had, I think one of the readings I had was something like 260 on 180 or something. Um, yeah. And my average over the 24 hours, I think, was 190 on 120 or something like that. So, um and I, I had to keep going up and up and up. I was on the strongest dose of the medication I could get and I had to have two medications because I had to be on a diuretic as well and nothing could stabilise my my blood pressure very well. You know, Even prior to joining HPF, I was on a really strong dose and my average blood pressure reading was still around the 160 on 90 sort of thing. Um, and now I'm actually off blood pressure medication completely in... In seven months, I managed to get off of that. Uh, my blood pressure without medication is now 110 on 50 um, consistently. So, you know, it's better than normal. It's at an athlete's level now. And I think that's a combination of a lot of things, my physical health hugely, but um, my improvement in mental health and calmness and the ability to not get as stressed and reactive naturally is going to contribute to um, not having those stresses and, and and high blood pressure naturally but yeah definitely that that going back to the the question that third child rosie our little rosie who's the light of my life she's robust she's challenging as all shit she is like um but i love that you know and um you know our two youngest are, are, are quite challenging children but 
Um, you know, where I formerly would have seen that as frustrating, now I, I, I see the joys in that as well because they're real little personalities. And um, if we can help harness that and sort of um, give them a good start and, and teach them good skills and, and, and show them leadership and leading with love, I feel like anything can be achieved, you know. So, mm. but yeah, that was that was it. it, it and and it totally, um, our marriage was as good as over after number three was born. With the way that I didn't step up and lead within the family unit, especially like I promised, but it was another promise that was uh, not delivered because I was, you know, lying and. Um, just full of cover-ups now, similar to what you said in your, your podcast, you know, with um, with your wife, I sort of um, was doing a lot of cover-ups myself and, and not being honest with myself or my family. And eventually the truth always wins, like you say, and uh, I was exposed heavily. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. It's always hard when it's the truth we don't like, isn't it, mate? <laughs> it's sometimes necessary and... Um... It's really interesting when we talk about our children. I love how strong my children are. And, yes, they're more work. I mean, yeah, man, they're like, especially Lily in the middle one. But Roman, he's, he's stronger than ever and, and, and Stella's hitting her straps in her own identity. But uh, what's the alternative though, right? I want fucking soft children. Why? Is the world soft? Is the world nice and easy? I mean, it's, it's probably more challenging than ever in its own right. So, yeah, I can definitely see how you can turn that from being a challenge into something where it's like I see it as I see it as strength, Mike. I see it as like, yeah, what they they are. Um, you know, there's dependence, there's independence, there's interdependence. You can you can actually still be a team. It's not that you don't have to fucking label everything. Um, let's let our children be strong, but let's continually lead and guide and be attractive to them to look at us to model beliefs, values, and the pathway. Because we are leading the charge with the energy we express and how we carry ourselves. I mean, we're, why wouldn't you want to? And this is the funny part. So many guys out there looking to control other things they shouldn't. Let me ask you a question. Do you have any fucking control over yourself? Do you have? Can you completely control yourself? 99% of the time, the answer will absolutely be no. And do we actually ever have complete self-control? I mean, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty resilient and steeled to all of the different things in life that can expose or trigger a reaction, and I don't, but we're only human too. So what do we do, Mike, to put the percentages or the numbers in, in our in our favour, in our corner, so that we can turn up more often than not uh, consistently as, as, as loving fathers with leadership, when we're the Viking, we're the Viking without burning everything, you don't have to, when we're the panda, we're the panda, without giving away and forfeiting our personal integrity and our complete self-identity and when we understand and recognize both of those, we're actually the chief. We, we sit right in the middle. What a beautiful thing. Like, fuck, what else, what else could you, what else could your children want or need or desire or ask for? I and mean, what else could you give that, that would be more fulfilling than that, mate? Like it's, it's incredible, but you know, I do remember you did a, and it was a pretty emotional testimonial down in Cozzy. And I think you spoke the words where, yeah, um, you know, obviously Tess said that she'd fallen out of, out of love with you, mate. And is that around, was that before or after this time here? I'm just going to do a screen share here, but who was this man, Mike? That was that was a man. No, that was not long before um, I joined HPF. I was I was in a dark place now, and um, hmm. yeah, you know, well, your I, daughter's not even happy here in this picture. It's tough, man. Nah, those, yeah. those obviously listening to the podcast can't see this, but don't worry, you'll you'll see Mike's story soon enough. But that's um, yeah. Gets me a bit emotional saying that, but yeah. Fucking look at that though. <laughs> that's unbelievable, man. I showed my wife this the other day. She said, "No, that's not the same person." And <laughs> have have a look at this man. Like that is fucking incredible, man. <laughs> yeah, Mate. that's incredible, Mike. No, it is. It's. Uh, I've worked really hard at it, but I. Uh, I've had all the support in the world to do it, you know. So um, this this program is just like I say, it's been everything to me. I've sort of gone all in. I, you know, I, there was no other option for me. And not everyone needs to be at rock bottom to to make amazing gains out of something like this. You know, there's many men in the program that um, are looking for a bit extra in certain areas, and then. Before they know it, they, uh, you know, because we, we're very open. I speak to a lot of tribe members, you know, 
they, they, they've got it together pretty well and then they, they join for a certain reason, like a weight loss or, or a health impact. And then all of a sudden, as they, their self-reflection skills get greater, they realise, oh, fuck, maybe I didn't have everything that I wanted or needed. And, and you know, it's funny, even the people that might have joined for the most novice of, of things, like losing 15 kilos or 10 kilos or something, which is a big deal, but it's one very small aspect of of a life, they realise, hang on, I needed to do this. I needed to work on connection. I needed to work on, you know, communication, my energy, you know, my, um, uh, you know, it, it's just incredible. Like it just, it, it hits every every part of a man's life significantly. So, um, you know, I've made a huge transition and transformation, but, and I've worked hard at it, but it hasn't been impossible by any means, you know. It's sort of... Um, I don't feel like um, anything else could have happened by the way I've invested in the program. I, I, like, so as surprising as looking at some of the photos might be, like for me, it's like, well, what else was going to happen? I had to, I had to improve like that, you know, because I, I followed, I followed the protocol, you know. So follow the game plan, Mike, and that's yeah. uh, that's what we do. You know, it's it's this is not. <clears throat> And it never really has been, to be fair, even back in 2018 when obviously our, our team was much, much less and, and the service or I guess the um, the protocols and the principles were less. It's, it's never been just the owl show. It's just continuously taking in all of these men. Have a look at our weekly temples, like the thousands and thousands and I'd be over 10,000 points of, of data and feedback and channeling through that, ciphering through, filtering and then reallocating, redeveloping, redesigning. Like you said, most men... Many men these days are waking up. We find that with a lot of guys reaching out there. They, when they dig deep enough, they realize, yeah, you know, I'm fucking dropping the ball, man. My marriage is falling down. Or there's something, oh, yeah, we still love each other, but it's stagnant and it's waned. Or, you know, it's it's not the same with the children uh, that don't look at me or there's no respect in the household. But do you respect yourself? And so a lot of the times these moving parts of, of, of thinking, I, I want some support or I just want to get a bit better, or it's like, no, no, no. You, you know, uh, remember or not listening to this as well, you know deep down it's like, hang on, there's... If, if, I, if I dig deep enough, give myself the space and time, I can recognise, not that you're short or you're not enough or you, you, you're incompetent or you haven't come to – it's a, it, it's a simple case of <clears throat> everything being organic, Mike. It's either growing or dying. So if you're not investing in your marriage, it is slowly dying. It doesn't matter that you stay together because it's comfortable and convenient for the children or for the wife because the children are still being ra- – <clears throat> forget all that stuff because if you lean on those crutches, they will get pulled from underneath you as well sooner rather than later. And uh, the time will roll around where men who listen to this episode today will be in their 50s. If they're not already, they'll be in their 60s. If they're not already, they'll be in their 70s. Um, <clears throat> they'll be taking their last breath or blinking their last blinks. So who has time to fuck around? When we look at this, Mike, and, and establish that, yes, we can have all of it in family, soft and service, and a lot of the reasons why men fall down is they do not have the right supportive environment around them. Two, one in the household, which means the home, not the household, the home is critical, and stability in the environment of the house with love and leadership with your wife and with and for the children. And two, an environment away from that that can drive and command and challenge and, and uplift and direct you to become more for everything else in life so you have a true, genuine championship team in your corner to be strong for you because you are strong for others aka your family that's a, that's a big thing mike and i look at th- th- those those pictures there and yeah like you said <clears throat> it, it's that whole um you know blown away and inspired but also not surprised yeah and i know that's and that's definitely not taking away your results but i mm-hmm. look at your commitment everything you know i'm like yeah like you man and it's not that we assume or expect things that's a dangerous line to walk but i'm like well, fuck, of course Mike should turn out like that. Have a look at it, what he's investing. You you have literally recreated yourself and recreated your life. Mm. Like, think think about that, mate. Like, that's, that's, that's incredible. Um, it, it really is. And I'm sure you do have those moments where you're proud of yourself, but you certainly don't take a backward step either, Mike. You continually push and strive through the journey. And, um, you know, what, what was it that – I'm curious, before you got to that stage, like, what, what was the – what was the switch that flicked for you? You know, like I, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you to share if you want to, mate, but obviously you're in a pretty dark spot just yeah. before you, you pulled the trigger and came on board with us. But what, what was, what was going, 
through your head there and um and then what was the flick that led to you going no no that's just not that's not the answer maybe this is um so i i did see a couple of ads of rdm you know over the years you know but not not a lot but I, it, I think it was in the back of my head i saw a facebook ad and thought oh shit this is this is singing to me but um i don't think i was ready and that that would have been like randomly maybe six months plus before I joined, could have been 12 months even. Um, and it must have just been stored in the back of my head somewhere because things deteriorated a lot for me and I was, I was really depressed and um, I, I just didn't think I could change. And I, Well, I knew I had to change. I knew I needed to stop the drink. I knew I needed to stop drugs. I knew I needed to stop so much with my work and, and invest in my marriage and my family, but I just didn't know how. I, I didn't have the, the tools or the insight to do it. So um, I, I got to the point where I thought my family were better off without me. Um, and I was in the shed one night and, um, yeah, about to do something I would have regretted <coughs> forever, actually started doing it and, um, and then I pulled myself back because my kids flashed into my eyes and I didn't want them um, finding me or my wife finding me uh, lifeless, basically. Um, and I, I I don't know, I didn't want to die, but I, I didn't really see any alternative because I, I was lost and I, I couldn't find my way back at the time. And randomly... <laughs> this RDM thing just popped into my fucking head when I walked walked back inside and I got on the um, computer and straight away just um, sort of tried to sign up sort of thing or reach out and it ran because I hadn't seen anything for six months or so prior probably and then, you know, uh, next day I got a call straight away. This was at two in the morning or something when I, when I messaged and I already had a meeting for I think 10 a.m. or something the next morning, Sunday morning, and uh, got on a Zoom session with um, one of the consultants and um, I signed up straight away, you know, um, because I I didn't want to die and I wanted to change and I felt like this was this was the olive branch. This was this was something that could help me. Um, and I wasn't positive but I was like, hang on. You know, I, I basically saw it as though any moment of my life from that point forward was a gift um, because I was that close to not being here um, that I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going all in. Um, and that's what I've done. So, um, and the program's just been incredible. Like, I, you know, uh, the coaching program the coaches are, are phenomenal like I had uh, one of the coaches Drew message me yesterday like just out of my temple you know like how you going with this mate challenges like what are we going to do and you know how you how you coping and I messaged him back sort of thing you know any strategies and he's given me some strategies to work on what can I do so like this interface and I I have um I I've gone all in with my communication with the coaches as well. I'm like, fuck it, I'm in this program. I'm going to get the most out of it. So I reach out to the dream team and I encourage other men on the inside to, to do the same. I speak to a lot of men now in, in the tribe and I think a few people reach out to me because uh, they have seen me go all in and sort of um, you know ask for advice on certain things, much the same as what I do to other tribe members as well. Um, I just say just utilise what's there. Don't get overwhelmed reach out to your dream team, reach out to the, the coaches, the people, and, you know, just show up every day and do the little things, the little one percenters. They all add up to huge things in the end. But, but yeah, that, I, was, I was in a dark, dark place out, very dark, um, you know, and fast forward, I suppose we'll talk about it anyway, but, you know, I've gone from the shittiest I've ever been in my life to the happiest by far that I've ever been, not just in my adult life, in my entire life, you know, so. That's incredible, man. It's a big, big testament to yourself as well, Mike, and and rising up. And for a lot of men out there, maybe it might not be the, the complete um, rock bottom that they may perceive or, or what you personally went through, Mike, but essentially so many men out there do believe they have no choice 
because that's what it comes. What you're talking about then is like there, there. There's no other options. There's, there's no choice, and mm-hmm. but there is. You are fucking living, breathing proof of that, Mike. And there is always a choice. When I when I take a hard line in my podcast, it's out. It's it's out of love, man. You know that. I'm just. Very, I'm very passionate about going. Hey, let's, let's be a fucking winner. Let's let's be a winner. Don't. Don't buy into the bullshit. Even if it's bullshit, you feed yourself. Even if the thing that's fucking feeding you the bullshit has fed you and kept you full and warm in certain winters, he's not your friend. There are two. Yeah, there's all these different parables, the Chinese one, which which wolf wins, the wolf that you feed, you know, the wolf of power, wolf of of grief or despair or doubt. Or, you know, there are so many different examples around this, the little voice inside, self-sabotage, tall popping it yourself you don't have to you don't have to say yes to that and you don't have to say no to a better version of yourself you you truly don't and like i said mike you are the living embodiment of that to really stand up and go well there is and it might have been in that moment but essentially you follow the bouncing ball one domino becomes a domino 50 percent larger becomes 50 percent larger and next thing you know mate you are knocking over the the tower of pisa with your might your effort and your results and it's just it's phenomenal. Even here, like I know I was showing pictures before, but you sent me, uh, well, you posted this and then sent me this um, in, in our chat together, one-to-one. Beautiful Mother's Day morning. So much has changed since last Mother's Day. Last year, I was hungover, didn't go to any effort with my wife and kids. This year, I was up early as usual, cleaned the house, did all my morning, normal morning routine and cooked breakfast with my kids for my amazing wife. Can feel the difference in the household. So much calmer and happier this year. HPF has changed the life of me and my family forever indebted to this amazing program hashtag fuck yeah the dads what a good hashtag that is <laughs> but um and pictures you know and then they're not you know lovely pics mate of what you did um, for your wife and and the girls are seeing this hey this is what a man this is the standard of of, of a man um in in my life you got three daughters man like I've, I've got two daughters and i was chatting to corinne the other day about this i'm like you know what like i'm not going to judge if I, I had plenty of shit wrong with me when i was 15 17 21 25 30 we all still have points of mess that we can continually work on ourselves that's the beautiful gift of life i mean if you have time to go through with whinging or complaining or bitching or being a victim or drama sort of shit if you have time for that or being bored you're saying yes to that exponentially while saying no to actually focusing on yourself you do have fucking time you do have energy you do have capacity you just put that shit in the wrong baskets on the wrong buckets or focusing on the wrong areas I said to Corinne, look, you know what? Like my children are going to have very high standards because of what they see in their father. I get that. But also they're going to have a father who's transparent enough and empathetic enough, even for the young blokes they bring home to go, hey, you know what? I wasn't, I wasn't like, I wasn't like the way I am when I was his age. Like when he's 15 or 17 or when they have boyfriends or 21, or I'm going to help him develop and continue to rise up and grow and evolve as a man. But essentially, the journey and the transparency of the pathway it doesn't mean I share all the ins and outs and dump my baggage on my kids, <laughs> like six, six, three, and one. But, you know, it, it, it's true, man. They are always watching. The work is actually done. Even before you have those conversations, hey, you know what, you know, you, you can have a boyfriend and you might have some fights and blah. Even forget all that. They're just going to see and model how you turn up consistently. And it's the energy, isn't it, Mike, that, that, they, that they see and feel from what, what goes on in the household. Definitely, yeah. They they see it hugely, and that it's funny. My um, Isabella, my uh, six year old, who's just just gorgeous, and Gracie, who's four, even little Rosie, like that. They, they see me work out and train and energy. So now <laughs> I had to bring some little weights home for them from from my um, my office. And like, it's funny. We just muck around doing weights. They. I don't know, they're looking at dad now in not just my physical change, but that they're starting to talk like my daddy's so strong, you know, he he's tough and courageous and and you know, in a not in a God, he's he's lifting weights and getting really big, but just, you know, I suppose they see a transformation physically and they see that attached to my energy within the household, you know, and that they, they do. They they those little eyes and those little ears, Jesus, they hear a lot because since since I have joined the program, I've had the tough, I've asked the tough questions to them because a big part of me being a part of this program is stop being so fucking defensive and stop covering up shit all the time and and being, you know, making excuses all the time and, you know, um, 
uh, I think a lot of the time I used to do that and think, well, woe is me. Fuck, I'm doing all this. Why Why is my wife so difficult? Why don't my kids, why aren't they really close to me and love me? But, you know, you know, self-reflection is a, is a beautiful thing now where I go, well, because I wasn't fucking investing in it. I wasn't, wasn't giving them the time and I was angry and frustrated. But my daughter, Isabella in particular, um, you know, she she remembers a lot of things that I was doing prior, you know, and my anger and my temper. And even on the way to school this morning, I had a chat with her because I knew I was doing this today. And I said, Bill, I want to ask you about um, what, and I, and I didn't actually say how has RDM changed me initially. I said, what can I do better as a dad still now? And, you know, th- those questions went, we, we didn't have before and that self-reflection and the ability to, I was always good at taking critique um, within business because I knew that that was part of it and within sport. But I was shit at taking critique from my family. Um, and I think my wife could still deliver it a bit better. Um, yes. <laughs> they'll take their opportunities where they can, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, uh, I said to her, it'd be nice if you were a little bit more balanced uh, in your approach at times, but we're a, we're a work in progress. And, I, and I'll be honest, like the, the um, connection with my children and the improvements with my children have come faster than with my wife, but my wife had to protect my children and she was, you know, she really suffered a lot. So um, we, we, we've got a solid marriage now and we, um, we love each other. You know, and you know, even last night, Bella, I saw her, you know, I picked my wife up, gave her a big kiss in the kitchen uh, when she got home, you know, and, and I could see Bella just looking out the side of her eye and she had this big smile cracked on her face. And, um, it, you know, they, they do, they witness the bad, but they witness the good. And when the, the, the home is filled with more good than bad, it becomes a nice place to be a part of, you know, so... Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, mate. You know, it's um, they, they, like you spoke about. They they see and hear, and and you know, they are immersing in, and then they they take that and they experiment or discover or search, and then there's different environments, and they correlate the two, and they they compare. And environment might be school, other kids, other kids' stories, or you know, lies or truths, or you know, um, all these different parts, mainly around different environments start to form their reality from which the seed that's originally planted is absolutely inside the household. It's really interesting, the whole question, what can I do to be better or how can I be a better dad? Or I remember um, me talking about this in one of my, I don't think it was an ad, it was maybe one of our posts and some fella jumping on there, something like what a crock of shit and, and you know, who asked their kids what they what they need from their fathers and some along the lines of you, you tell them or blah, blah. I was like, man. <laughs> how would you even know you're not a kid anymore it's obviously been a long time since you have been but um the whole attitude obviously stinks but um but i looked at that and i was like why wouldn't you why wouldn't you just gain their perspective it was part of the last podcast around respect how do you know how do you really know what your children value well, you wouldn't know unless you ask you see him playing like i see stella playing with barbie fun houses and dolls and whatnot but if i ask her Hey, what's the most favourite thing you love? Ish could be like, oh, our pet bunnies, mm. um, you know, or, or I love a special time when we go to the park. I might have nothing to do with the Barbie doll. So how would you know unless you ask? Just like when it comes to, it's not like you're sitting down and just pulling your pants down, going, okay, um, fucking, you know, give it to me, give me all the, all all the bad things, and here I am. I'm just I'm standing here vulnerable, exposed, and all the bad points and flaws and, and faults. And same with the misses. Obviously, yeah, they are they're a bit more steeled towards that and um so i'll reframe the question mike when i'm talking to corinne i'll be like what are the most amazing things that you love about me corinne <laughs> just don't don't give me the option are there any other questions you want to ask al no no that's good just that one just that one around positivity and <laughs> oh shit man but it's a valuable thing because then what you're doing is you're getting insights into your children's world like until they hit seven a lot of what they what they're literally creating and, and, and visualizing and, and manifesting might be an illusion to us, but that, you know, that, that, that little doll with the, with the tiara and then the horse, it's like sh- she's really on a little farm there and the little doll is riding a real horsey. Like that's how, that's how kids work. Like it's a part of, I remember looking into it, but it's, um, it's part of the makeup of the brain and how it works and fires where literally like a lot of their dream, a lot of the stuff like dreams for us when we're asleep, 
is 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 believed reality for them. You know, a lot of the the, the fairy tales and the playing. And Lillian has a a friend at the moment called Pudgy. I don't know where the fuck she gets these names, man. Pudgy, what's up? <laughs> it's like, Daddy Pudgy sitting on your lap having dinner with us too. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. How are you going, Pudgy? You're gonna have some of, of you're gonna have some of Dad's uh, meatballs and, and pasta and whatnot. Mate, it's hilarious. But she absolutely believes. Oh yeah. That's real. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you use use that as a um, you know, use the ability to connect with your children um, through asking them questions as a pathway to connect with them even better, or, or, or um, you know, connect better as as a father, or at least even just engage and be present and find out a little bit more about their world. They know that you care and you are invested in them because, well, unless you ask a question, and walk away because you're there and, and you're present. And um, what are some of? And I know you spent mentioned some of them, Mike, but I guess. Great, greatest wins, man. Like, what are some of the big? Let's fast forward to right now. This today, here we are, um, back end of May. What What are some of the greatest takeaways, um, victories, revelations, and things that you've you've, you've had, mate, and experience for yourself and and for loved ones? I uh, look the connection with my wife and kids is definitely the predominant one for sure. I mean, there's just so many wins that I've had. It's just ridiculous. Like you said, I've my whole my whole world and life has changed and it's funny I'm still living in the exact same environment but the environment itself has changed because I've changed um, and you know I know JK said this on a session that we were talking about and in his podcast but if you want to change the marriage or change your family change the man and you know I, I I'm living testament to that it couldn't be more true I think so I mean the connection my my children um, and it's funny, I had a chat with my mother-in-law on the weekend. We were up at the farm. Uh, my, my in-laws own a farm. Um, we, we run some cattle and sheep and, and, and it's great for the kids and for us as well. But she said to me, you were always a good dad, Mike. You, you know, you always were there and did things. You know, you were, you know, you would take them places, you cared for them and stuff. And she And I said, yeah, I did do things, but you know the difference is, and this is what I think now, I used to think of everything as a chore, like, ah, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, uh, I have to do this, I have to do that. I certainly wasn't doing as much as what I should have, but every time I was doing something with my kids, I didn't really want to be doing it, whereas now I feel like it's such a privilege and a blessing that I can choose to do these things, you know, and 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 be with my children. And that's what I was trying to explain to my, my mother-in-law, you know, that no, I'm loving doing what I'm doing now. There's a huge difference in my mindset, you know, and something as simple as that to me is such a huge win, doing something with, with interest and with love um, and with energy and presence more than anything, you know. My, my kids, you know, they, they thrive off of that. They love it. Um, you know, some of the things that we've got through this program, like special time through the, the session we did with Shannon, you know, like, and I, it's been a game changer for me. You know, we, uh, my, my beautiful Gracie, she's, um, she's got some challenges and some sensory issues. She has weekly occupational therapy and stuff now. Um, but I, I think the thing that single-handedly helped her more than any of that is this special time that we do you know and if you ask any of my children what is their favorite thing you know they talk about special time Bella even said to me today I, like I said on the way to, to to school I asked her what can I do better she said to me you you can still um try and not growl and yell um, and I said, yep, cool, point taken. That's a work in progress. You've improved a lot, but you still need to improve. Um, yep, great. And, um, and then she went on to, without me asking her, talking about the things that she loves. Special time was one of them that she just said straight away. I love special time. I love that we're best friends now, Dad, you know. I love, you know. So um, I have a closeness and a friendship with my, my children um, I play with them. I invest the time. I'm in, involved in their games, you know, like when we do our weekly temples and it's like, you know, um, how many days did you, you know, play with your children and what activities? It's like every fucking day. And how big is the piece of paper for me to write down all these activities that I'm doing? Like because I'm so engrossed in their life at home, you know, I, we do 
no tech for my monthly goal of, of, of May is keep the fucking tech away because my phone was creeping back in again with business, you know, and I'm responding to emails and, you know, that, that negatively impacts stuff. So, I mean, the connection with my wife and kids is a huge one. The actual ability to have insight as well now into my shortfalls and shortcomings has been a big win for me um, and not being defensive and, and um, I suppose, you know, so frustrated by it. I'm sort of seeking out information from my, my wife and kids now, which I, I wouldn't have previously, but it's only because I have confidence that I'm doing a good job most of the time now. You know, not, not to say I want to... Um, I don't. I don't ask to be asked. Yes, what am I doing well? I, but I know I've got enough wins on the board now, and I've got enough stuff in the emotional bank account to go. What can I do better? And not get upset about it and frustrated by it because I know that I'm showing up and I'm turning up every day for my family, you know, and every day for myself as well. Um, but I, I know the biggest thing again is just total joy in my life out now. I, I'm happy fulfilled and content like I and that I think they're my three words for the the month in my journal happy fulfilled and content you know like I I um I have a a level of joy that I I haven't had I haven't experienced you know before in my life um just so happy to be where I am with my family you know sharing these experiences and having the energy to do it all the time I mean I I know, you know, that everything is just incredible, but like Ken, you know, like set me up, everything he's told me to do I've done and fucking hell, the winds are just incredible, you know, like my energy, like I, I'm really, really, and I know I was an athlete previously, but shit, for the last 10 years I've been far from a fucking athlete, you know, I've, I've been overweight, unfit, feeling like crap, Um and, you know, my nutrition and energy is incredible. My sleep, you know, whereas I thought I had to use alcohol to sleep, you know, my sleep scores are consistently in the 90s on my aura ring now, you know, and like, you know, 80s at the worst, you know. So that I, I get an 80 or a, and I'm like, oh, shit, I need to step that up a bit, you know. So, like, it's because, again, routines and everything, but, um, yeah, the, it, the, the, the big wins, obviously, connection and life with my wife and kids, um, my health and my energy um, and the ability to have insight um, and, and have a real hunger and drive to, to improve more. Like every layer, you know, I peel back and every time I level up, I see a greater need for change in other areas. Um, and it's not that I'm not satisfied with myself, but I know the more I keep levelling up, the the greater fun and greater success and 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 I'll have in life, you know. Um, and then the, another huge win is the fact that I've been able to succeed in service still without having to invest that level of time in there. I mean that that's huge because. Um, without that, I wouldn't be able to be investing in other areas as well. Um, but, yeah, God, the winds would go on forever, Al. Like they're just, um, you know, it's just changed my world. It's incredible, yeah. J- JK will get jealous, mate, if we beat him when we go over two hours with this episode. So <laughs> let's, keep, let's keep the winds rolling. <laughs> that's um, <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Well, well spoken, Mike, and great shares, man. Um, you know, I remember seeing it because he was like, fuck, this guy's jacked, man. Look how shredded he is. It was, it was insane. It's what he lost 15 or 17 kilos or thereabouts. Yeah, I was now 19, but 19, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was at four, 14 or 15 at Cozzy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's incredible, man. And, and like we said, it's not about the fitness per se, but everything ties into the vehicle of life. What are we doing for our and with our bodies, uh, night routines, sleep, how are we tracking that? Um, obviously, the coach is on the inside. It's awesome, man. And even from the point of view, what you've spoken about with feedback, like it's it, it's great to get. Like you don't you don't have to take all of it in. There's we, we do questionnaires and feedback forms all the time. And sometimes guys will pop up ideas, but they don't understand our systems and processes or or the relevance of it or how important it is or the waiting for what would serve the tribe best. And so it's not that we say they're wrong or deny them, but essentially it's it's taking in, okay, well, 
where is it coming from? What's what's the agenda or what's the desire? And then, you know, really reorganizing that with your own personal integrity of what's important and who you are as a man, which is why it's so important. You must be stable in yourself. Otherwise, you're going in blind. You've got no fucking idea. So you're either yes man just gets told all the wrong in the world with you and what you have to do and you can't even do it because you haven't done anything or you're over the top like you said, super defensive because you can perform, but no, I'm not going to take that in because I can do that or I can do that. When you have that personal integrity, you can take it. Okay, I'll absorb that. I'll take that on board and I'll work with it. Hey, that's cool. That's, you know, you might not say directly to their face, people like, you know, what? okay, it's my four-year-old saying this. It's my wife saying this after a massive week under the pump with, with work or the kids or she was sick or I don't need to absorb that as my reality. I know what my truth is and what the truth is. And that's, um, that's why I talk about the truth always winning. Because it's so valuable, Mike. It's really your your rod and staff to to know exactly where you stand, um, and not just under times of, of of strain or dress or trouble, but all the time. You know, um, that's what creates certainty, and that certainty and stability gives you freedom, opportunity, um, the strength, and uh, like what you said, confidence and calmness. What um. Great episode, mate. I guess there'll be a couple of things as we, as we start to, to wind this up. I've really in, enjoyed this session with you, Mike. What are, I guess, what are the, is it probably all of it or, or something standing out to, hey, like what's one of the greatest things or what's the best thing you love about a high performance father and what we do here on the inside? Uh, I, the value of the tribe, I think, is second to none like the, you know, and the coaches are part of that tribe, which I love. You know, it's sort of not like, we have the coaches and the and the tribe members. We you know we we the coaches are we're all one big tribe. So the just the environment that it creates is is just unlike anything I've ever been a part of in my life. There's so much shit in this world. You know, currently, particularly with the last two years, you know, of all the bullshit that's happened in the world, where there's so much negativity. So much attacking, you know, of, of each other, um, putting each other down, you know, um, and just, you know, the, the negativity is just insane. And this this tribe and this environment is just full of energy and positivity. Like even, you know, even in my friendship circles, you know, people are happy for each other when they when they succeed, but there's often a level of jealousy even within, you know, friendships or family even, you know. Um, I know with my brother, for example, you know, jealousy around, you know, if I've done well in certain things or what have you. But there's none of that bullshit in this environment. It, it is genuine care for our comrades, gen, genuine care for men um, and support. And um, I don't know, it's a pretty amazing thing you've done, Al. I, I, I don't know how we can, you know, we're so connected to each other all across the country that, you know, when, when I rocked up to Cozzy, these were like best mates of mine that I'd met for the first time ever because there is no judgment. The, the level of sharing and the level of support is, is second to none. I, I share things with the tribe that I, I don't share with anyone. Um, and that's, that, that's the trust that I have and the trust that I'm going to get honest feedback. And it's not always what I want to hear, which I like, you know. Like Ben Henry has told me a few times, other guys told me a few times, mate, pull your head in a little bit about the way you're thinking, you know, because um, on reflection you could do better with certain things. And I'm like, fuck, you know what, I can, you know, and I'll try it and I'll call back, hey, things are really stepping up and <laughs> doing good. It's like um, because any any critique is not from a bad place within this environment. It's from a, a place where we all want each other to succeed and and you know I'm that's why I'm always open and willing to support people you know a few of the newer guys have come on board and and touch base with me to get some advice about how we can do things and the journaling because it's something I do, I do you know really thoroughly um, and I'm always there putting myself out so you know the the, the tribe the, the coaching is incredible and the coaching forms part of that tribe um, but I think that this environment um, without the tribe, I, yeah, it still would be a winner, but Jesus, it helps to expedite the process and just gives you energy and accountability constantly. Yeah, yeah fair point too. That last bit as well, mate. Like it's the, it is the core or the, the largest source of energy in here. And 
it's what I'm proud of most and really love, Mike, not just personally, because it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm simply a cog in the wheel as well. Um, and I'm proud that I add a lot of value. You know, it's not that I'm going the reverse psychology like a lot of people, I don't know if psychology is a word, but the reversal of, oh, look how, look how humble I am. I bust my fucking ass to get this stage, man. I'm very fucking strong and proud of where we are. And I own that. But also, this isn't just put up posters of fucking Al and, and all, all <laughs> worship the Sunday, the Sunday charge ups that he does. It's about really the entirety of, of what we represent. And uh, yes, it, it is sort of uh, not really frustrating used to be, but it is humbling that there are lots of people who, who copy us modelists. Um, they can steal our information and resources. People buy our challenges and with, with dummy accounts and blah, blah, blah. But you can't you can't click your fingers, man, and just have an environment like this. Like this is years and years and years and and cutting away some of the bad eggs, knowing full well, even to the stage where I've been stalked, my family's been threatened, cutting away some of the bad eggs that do not hold place in the tribe and making that decision, knowing that that might come to personal attacks to me, but what's best for the tribe? And that's been very rare, hasn't happened often, less than 10 times. But these are the points where it's the integrity and what you stand for that says, hey, this is where we're going, and that is an attractive thing, Mike. So it keeps attracting winners. And every time, every year, we raise the coaching programs, the delivery and service and what we do, what we provide, and then we raise the caliber of our message and how we help the man have it all. We raise the level of winners, and then we raise the standard of those coming in to become those winners. And like you said, you will be challenged, but it's from a genuine place. And you know that. It's it's absolutely genuine because I – I need Mike Kellington to win. Otherwise, what am I doing? I'm sitting here talking to myself, right? Um, we need you to win for us to win, not just branding or marketing, or fulfillment, reward, my belief in certainty. Like if I kick back and I was like, hey, man, like 80% of the guys have failed this program, I'd be like, what the fuck's wrong with the program? What are we doing wrong? What's I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fraud. I'm a failure. This doesn't work. And then we get something like this, like, no, nah, man, we can get guys and, and our success rate into, into the 90s. And, um, look, we, we give 100% guarantee if you move the mountain with us. But in terms of how much of the heavy lifting we do, we still push men through no fault of their own. Life's hard. Push them up into that 90-plus percent success rate. That's fucking massive, man. Like, that, that reinforces me, what we do, where we're going. And we continually, like I said, not unsatisfied, but we – but we tweak and having that chat challenge from a genuine place, place of love and the team that backs you. Yeah, you're right, Mike. There is no judgment and it should be taken on board. Just like me, when I get feedback, I'll read it. And sometimes I'll be like, Oh yeah, I never thought of that actually. And that's something we can do better to step up our game. Not, Oh, what the fuck's he know? He's not, he hasn't started a high performance father program. <laughs> it holds no place, man, for, for ego, you know? Um, what a session what a session mate final final thoughts or i guess words of wisdom like if there's a father here's one thing i want to say before i'll let you close it out mike um i wrote here because i wrote some notes without father there was a period of there was a, a short period of time where there was a, a very high potential that your children would have been without a father now i'm not saying those out there listening who aren't high performance fathers or aren't pulling their weight aren't fathers but i want you to ask yourself the question how much fucking time do you think you have how much of a father do you think you have been how much of a father do you think you can be because if you don't know the answer to one or any of those you need like it's not a want you need to get clarity and find out we don't push or sell anyone we have over 100 applications a week but if you want to be one of those who could potentially or might align with us, or maybe we can help you, or it could possibly be the solution. You won't fucking know if you don't find out. Fatherhood is one of the hardest and greatest things and always will be for me, Mike. And yes, through that, the passion comes through. Why? Because I feel very blessed at such an early stage of my journey with the level of trauma and hardships that I had to learn that quickly and that I did see that and had that realisation. Not kicking the fucking can down the road. We'll get there tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. Next thing you know, instead of the guys who are 35, they're fucking 45 reaching out and shit's burned to the ground and it's too late. Or maybe they're not here. So just before I dive in, uh, well, we throw it to you, Mike, and, and you um, dive into this last piece, it's something to think about, guys. Like, you, There's always a choice. Are we your choice? Maybe, maybe not. Like, if you don't believe we're the right fit for you, I agree. Of course we're not the right fit for you because of where your head's at and your perspective and your assumptions. Why would I want that on the inside with us as well? It goes both ways. It's about opening up the doors and your perspective to opportunities and going, well, which door do I want to walk through? 
Is it doing nothing, going it alone, fluffing around on bullshit or going all in? What are your thoughts? Well, final final thoughts, Mike, and I guess some advice for a father listening to this who maybe he's sitting on the fence, maybe he's just started listening to us, I don't know, but he's um, obviously lending an ear, and, and uh, which means that, you know, he's starting to open up the doors to to reflecting and seeing that he needs something. But what are your thoughts and final thoughts and advice, mate, for a father who is listening to this who's not on the inside? Look, I, I genuinely believe that every, every man does need this. I think um, men need it to certain different levels, you know. Not everybody is... Um, and die straight sort of rock bottom when they when they join but every single man every dad you know can benefit from this you know so um the program is just ever evolving as well that's the other thing that i just am so impressed with even since i've joined in eight months the 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 evolution of the program has been massive, you know, the the things that we're reflecting on now, the things that we're gauging and measuring on, even the coaching pieces and everything that sort of everything just is is just revving up, you know. Um, So, you know, to any man, you know, um, in any position, and if you're on the fence, you know, I I can guarantee you if you invested in this and, and follow the protocol and immerse yourself in this winning environment without a doubt you, you win there's no other option you know and, and I suppose you need to ask yourself or any man needs to ask himself do they want to become the best version of themselves and do they want to create a better life for them and their family and leave a fucking legacy you know for me I want a legacy I want my children's children's children to be talking about Mike Killington that that paved the way in our family. It was just incredible um, figure within the family unit that was a leader of, of people, you know, successful in, in service, but, you know, looked after himself, he, he squeezed every bit of joy and happiness out of life and fucking brought his family along with him the whole way so that they squeezed everything out of life. You know, I just this incredible hunger to, to, to have an incredible life now, and, you know, and I'm getting a taste for it and I'm not fucking letting it go, you know. So, um, so yeah, I mean, to any man, you know, it's not an advertisement, but fuck, it works. Like, honestly, I'm living proof it works, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back solid, you know, better than ever. So um, you gotta you got to put the, the work in. But like JK said, and like if you choose your hard, you know, choose your hard. Put, you know, I work hard in this program, but fucking hell, it gives me incredible, you know, return on investment. You know, I had a hard, much harder life before this, much harder, you know. So um, my heart accomplishes great things these days, whereas my heart before was working me towards the grave. Mm. You're an absolute legend, Mike. Absolute legend, man. We, we love having you on the inside, brother. And- well done, man. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you, mate. I'll, I'll never leave, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll need to run an event. We'll run an event in South Australia. I'll bring the caravan across, mate, and we'll, we'll come to South Australia. And <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll kill a, a, a calf in your honour, so, yeah. <laughs> Have some yes. of my fingers cattle. Oh, mate, I get jealous of the, uh, oh, the grass fed and the um, <laughs> some of the pics of the food you throw up. It's, uh, yeah, it makes me very hungry, very hungry. Um <laughs> No, well spoken, mate. We'll finish on this note asking a question. What would you do if you had one to 2,000 hours back in your life? What would you do to get that? Well, I know for me, Mike, the answer is fucking anything. Like you give, you give me one to 2,000 hours a year back, out for myself, for my family, for my life, anything. But also, what would you do with that time? Because that is absolutely an opportunity impossible, and Mike is living proof of that um, at a very high standard and level because of the choices he made, the leadership that he took, the onus, and the ownership of his own life and, and how he actually liberated himself from the self-sabotaging the little voice inside me escapes. What an episode. I got, uh, I got goosebumps a few times, man. Like it's just, it's awesome, Mike. I really love doing this and, and I love doing it because it's, it's nothing that it's ever done alone. Even when I'm in here in the office by myself or doing episodes by myself, I'm actually never alone. We, we have the tribe and it's, um, it's a power that's second to none, mate. And you are, 
are um, you know, the epitome of what that stands for. Thank you again, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And um, Mike, thank you, sir, for your time and your energy and sharing your story. And hey, what a story. I'm sure this is going to help many men um, have some reflection themselves and, um, and start to say yes to the right things for themselves and their family. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for creating this amazing sort of movement and program because uh, it's changing the lives of dads and families out there, mate. You know, I'm living proof. Good on you, Mike. Another dad winning is another family thriving, my man. That's it. Great stuff, man. Thanks, Al. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this episode and got some golden nuggets with possibly one or two aha moments as well. If you truly loved and enjoyed what you listened to, then I want to invite you to share this episode with someone who you know needs to hear this. It could be your brother, friends, colleagues, your uncle, even your wife. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that none of us are alone in the hardships we face. But the solution to getting back on top winning can start with a gift from someone else. And that gift could be an episode like this. Because another man transformed is another family saved, which is exactly what we're all about. Thriving and winning in life. There is no alternative. It's possible. It has been done. It can be done. So it should be done. I appreciate your support in spreading this message. Cheers, mate.